routine of 15 days of foundation mug of the day. This is my new favorite coffee cup of life. If you're new here, coming on the last day, this is where we are trying out a new foundation every single day for 15 days. I'm going to leave the playlist down below in case you are just stumbling across this video or you missed some of the days. You can check the 15 days of foundation playlist. It has all the videos 1 to 15 listed there. You can start from the beginning. First off, super quick before we get into this video, I just want to say a huge thank you to you guys for all of your support throughout this whole series. I did this just kind of as a challenge for myself because I love foundation. I've just been overwhelmed with the amount of positive feedback from you guys and snaps and tweets and everything. So I just wanted to say thank you to you guys because at the end of the day when I'm exhausting and editing at 12 a.m. after everything else. Reading your comments has really made it all worth it to me, so thank you guys. I love you guys. Bayrito fam is the best. So I am going to be doing a wrap-up video of 15 Days of Foundation. We're going to talk about my thoughts of all the foundations I tried, best and worst. That video won't be up tomorrow because honestly I need a day to like chill, but I'm going to go through, watch all the 15 days to have like a refresher, give myself a couple days to try a couple foundations in different ways with different powders to see if I like them better at all. I always update you guys on Snapchat and Twitter any kind of details like that. So you can follow me there. Everything's the Taylor except Snapchat, which is the Taylor Snaps. But anyways, on to the final day of 15 Days of Foundation. Today we're going to be talking about the Urban Decay Naked Skin Weightless Ultra Definition Liquid Makeup. I had you guys on Snapchat vote between this and three other foundations, two other foundations. This one won by literally over double. I was surprised. Apparently you guys are really curious about this one. So this is the final foundation in the series. Obviously I'm still bought and I'm going to try out all the other foundations that I've shown you guys. So that will be coming. This is one of those foundations that I feel like I don't know why I've never tried. I love the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer. It's what I'm wearing today. And I've just never tried the foundation. I think I always thought it would be way too dark for me. Buy the shade 0 0.5. This comes in 26 shades. So I'm going to insert some shade swatches right here. That sentence took me 10 times to say. Okay, swatch time. So right here is the Urban Decay Naked Foundation in 0 0.5. This is Kat Von D Lock It Tattoo Foundation in L42. This is the new Hourglass Stick Foundation that we did a review on yesterday in the shade Alabaster. This is MAC NW10, and this is Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in 110. It's pretty similar to MAC NW10, except I feel like it's actually slightly lighter. This retails for $40 on Sephora's website. You can also find this on Glambot, which I mentioned in my YSL video, but I just love buying high-end makeup on Glambot. It's a great way to save some money. Since this is an older foundation, Glambot typically has a bunch of these products. But anyways, you can find this on Sephora as well. If you have a hard time finding foundations for your skin undertone, they have a cool system with this foundation. Shades ending in 0 0.0 have warm undertones, ending in 0.25 have neutral undertones, ending in 0.5 have pink undertones, and ending in 0.75 have golden undertones. So hopefully with that shade system you can find one that works for you. So there wasn't a whole lot of claims on Sephora's website, so I'm on Urban Decay's website right now and we're going to read what this is supposed to be all about. It says, coverage without compromise. Our weightless formula blurs imperfections for a flawless finish that feels invisible but looks professionally retouched. Has buildable coverage, weightless feel, and a luminous finish. And it's supposed to look like the beautiful skin you were born with. So that's pretty much all the claims for this guy. It feels weird that this is the last day. I kind of want to like keep this going, but I also can't kill myself every day. So if you guys like this video and have enjoyed the 15 days of foundation series, please give this video a thumbs up. If you want to see how this foundation applies and wears throughout the day, you're in the right place. Just keep watching. Last day, folks. Last day. It is Sunday when I'm filming this and it is 75 degrees outside right now, so I'm hoping that I can make it outside. Still have to edit yesterday's and today's. I think I'm gonna prime half of my face with this Cover FX Mattifying Primer. This is one of my favorite primers. I've only used it so far when I've gotten the free samples from Sephora, so anytime that this is on their sample thing, I always snatch it up. This has 1% salicylic acid in it, so if you have acne, I feel like this is one of the only primers that doesn't break me out. So I'm just gonna apply this to the right side of my face. And between yesterday and today, these ones actually have closed up a lot. So I used the L'Oreal black mask that I keep showing on Snapchat. I love that. L'Oreal came out with these three new face masks and the black one is freaking amazing. So I just grabbed the lightest one regardless of the undertone because that's typically what I do. This is a big bottle. This only has one fluid ounce of product, which is standard for a foundation, but the bottle is pretty freaking big. So online it says to apply it with their brush or a sponge. So I'm just gonna do a brush on one side of the face, a sponge on the other. 
Since this is buildable, I have a feeling that a brush will be better, but we shall see. So I'm just gonna pump some out on here. Get going, whoa, super liquidy. Yeah, very liquidy. I'm gonna start out with my Sigma F82 flat top kabuki brush, and I'm just pouncing in here, and then just start. Ooh. All right, this honestly, off of one thing, this has better coverage than I was anticipating. I thought I was gonna have to like majorly, majorly layer this one. It has a very like kind of fresh, florally sound, smell, sound. That blended out super easily. I actually got better coverage than I was expecting. The shade looks pretty good. I'm hoping that this one doesn't oxidize at all. So it didn't totally cover up the acne spots up here, which is the one thin layer. I feel like it gave nice coverage overall though. One layer right here looks about a medium coverage to me. So let's try the left side with a sponge. By the way, I used about a pump and a half on the side of my face, so I'm gonna do the same on the sponge side and see how far that goes. I really like this side better with the brush. I think we got much better coverage with the brush. So I'm gonna go in for a second layer. This foundation is supposed to be buildable, so I'm gonna go back in with the brush on both sides and see how much coverage we can get. This side, I would totally wear out of the house just as is. On a day where I don't feel like I need totally full coverage or I just wanna like, you know, still see skin showing through. All right, second layer. I did a coconut oil mask on my hair last night and I feel like coconut oil works better on my hair than Olaplex number three. Does anyone else feel like that? I don't really notice a difference after I use Olaplex number three, even though I know it's technically like rebonding the molecules. The coconut oil, I actually feel like I can feel my hair feel softer and it just looks better. I'm liking how this looks. It looks like skin. I did just use pretty much that whole pump, so I'm going about half a pump more for the forehead. Sitting really nicely on the forehead. You guys know by now that's like one of my kind of problem areas, I guess you could say. My forehead tends to get really textured looking for certain foundations and it just clings on to my dry areas or the acne spots and it's looking really nice on the forehead. I'm gonna show you guys a close up after I do this side of my face. And I do have combination skin with cystic acne and I usually get a little bit oily on my T-zone. All right, I actually feel like that covered everything. I have a little bit left on here. So right now it's looking like a satin kind of demi matte finish. It definitely looks more satin right after you apply it, but this side is starting to look more demi matte as it starts to dry and set. It looks really nice. It's not clinging anywhere really. Around the nose area it looks pretty good right now. Upper lip looks good. The way it's sitting on my face is just very smooth. So here's the forehead. It's a nice high medium coverage I would say. You can still see some spots coming through here. You can see some like freckles and stuff but it looks really nice and smooth and it still looks like skin because you can see those things coming through. So it's 10 30 right now. I'm gonna apply the rest of my makeup and I'll be right back. I just realized you're supposed to shake this before. Whoops. I didn't actually notice any issues with not shaking it, but I guess you are supposed to shake this before applying. All right, so it's now 11.20. I'm gonna call this check-in time 10.40 because I did a Snapchat makeup tutorial on this look. If you guys wanna see how I did it, it was on Snapchat. It says that started 40 minutes ago, so we're gonna call it 10.40 because the foundation has been on this whole time, obviously. So I did end up setting my face with my Cover FX Illuminating Setting Powder that I've been using in a few other of these videos. I just love that setting powder. I did feel like this foundation needed to be set. This powder on top of it looks like a really good combo so far. I think the shade looks really nice. It doesn't look powdery at all on top of this foundation. My skin still looks like skin. And so far I'm liking the way that this looks. I think it looks really nice. So I'm gonna wear this throughout the day. I think that's all I gotta say. All right, so here's what it looks like in natural lighting. I wish I could film out here because I feel like it just makes your makeup look more true to color. There's a little close up. I think the powder definitely mattified it a little bit. Okay, it's now 3.43, so the foundation's been on for a little over five hours, and it looks pretty damn good. It looks pretty much the same as when we first applied it. I've been looking at it in natural lighting and it looks really nice. My only complaint right now is that it is getting a little bit 
cakey around my nose and upper lip area right here I'm getting some creasing. Other than that, there's nothing really to report right now except my right eye won't stop watering. Does that happen to anyone else? Only my right eye waters. It looks literally flawless on the forehead, on the cheek area, everywhere else except the nose area. So around here you can see that you can definitely see the foundation around my nose area and on my upper lip right here. I'm not sure what's going on right there but I usually don't get a mark right there. I usually get like the expression lines right here. So that's literally the only area I think that doesn't look great. Look at my forehead. I feel like my forehead looks really good for being on for five hours already. All right, so it is now 8.30 p.m. Ignore the hair and this side of my face. Just had a migraine for a few hours, so I was sleeping with a hot pack on this side of my face, hence why this eyeliner like, oh over my face. But I wanted to film this final check-in for you guys. The foundation's been on for 10 hours now. Did I just say that? I think I did. But considering that I was just laying on a hot thing, usually my foundation fully rubs off and my eye makeup on this side of my face. The foundation <laughs> looks pretty damn good. Besides my eye makeup, if you just looked at my face, I feel like you really couldn't tell. I wasn't laying on this side at all and this side is completely still on. As far as oil and everything, my skin looks really nice. I don't know if it's just the combo of this foundation with the powder that I use. Sometimes this powder just works really well with certain foundations and I feel like it makes my makeup last for forever. I don't know but this combo is good because for me and my oil my skin looks really nice right now after 10 hours. This side of my face looks like I just applied it like a few hours ago. It didn't oxidize which is awesome. The only area that I do not like is around my nose area. Next time I apply this, I'll probably try and put some kind of pore filling primer around my nose area. Sometimes that helps with the clinging, but I do get this a lot with foundation. Other than that, it looks good. But yeah, I like this one. I'm trying to think of a skin type that wouldn't be good for this, and I would say even with dry skin, this one might work for you. Just don't apply a setting powder over top. Oily skin, like, I think it did pretty damn well. I'm excited about this foundation. I definitely want to try wearing this with different powders and primers and setting sprays because I feel like it is one of those foundations that's kind of versatile. Just the finish of it and the fact that it's buildable, I feel like you can kind of control the coverage that you want. This eyeball is just a hot mess right now. Of course this would happen on the last day. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this series. I have a little surprise for you guys, but it's going to be coming in that video, so be sure to look out for that. I think that's everything. I feel like I should have some like big concluding speech, but I don't. I'm just like kind of drowsy on my green meds right now. So love you guys. Thank you for sticking with me throughout all of these 15 days. If you're new here, make sure you join the Bayrito family and click the subscribe button. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.